been five years since she lived with her aunt, Data, after her mother was gone. One day, this girl, Heidi, was brought to the Swiss Alps, where her grandfather lives, and stays with him. Data has got a new job in Frankfurt, so she decides to dump Heidi, not to let her drag her life. Halfway to the mountain, the neighbor tries to warn her that leaving the girl with the grandfather isn't a good idea. Little Heidi does not know what is waiting ahead of her. Especially all people have said how cruel and cold-hearted her grandfather is. But she is tempted by the amazing views in the mountain. She takes off her exquisite dress and boots, but left with only her underdress. Happily running after the goats in the Alps, enjoying the wind breezing through her face. Upon their arrival, Grandpa Alpo becomes angry and asks them to leave with a very indifferent tone. And Dada pretends to leave with Heidi. She takes Heidi to stay behind the barn, hugs her, and warns her not to be scared of Grandpa. However, in the next second, she runs away when the little girl is caught off guard. Heidi goes back alone to Alpo. He yells after Dada to take Heidi away, but Heidi says that she doesn't want Dada either. Grandpa Alpo finds it hard to accept this coming out of nowhere granddaughter. Heidi is suddenly coming into his life. He refuses her right away through actions by entering the house and locking the door. Heidi has nowhere to stay, so she climbs to the barn and sleeps with the goats on the floor full of straws. The night is thundering and stormy outside. Heidi's spending her night without any company. The following day, Alpo comes to the barn and gives Heidi some goat milk for breakfast, and then takes her to church because he thinks the priest knows how to deal with this girl. The priest looks closely at Heidi and claims she's being healthy and strong. He also tells Alpo that caring for this poor little girl is his responsibility, but Alpo refuses again, knowing that Alpo is not willing to take care of Heidi. The priest suggests the idea of taking Heidi with him to Mayafeld in three days to see if any farmer is glad to have a use for her. But during these three days, Heidi should stay with Alof Lim Wait. Back home, Heidi asks Alof if she has to sleep in the barn again for the night. But Alof says she can sleep wherever she wants. Heidi carefully enters the house, but finds her grandpa has only one chair and one bed. Delightfully, she notices a spot that has a set of stairs, and she climbs up and discovers an attic full of hay. Heidi rolls around the grass like a free bird. At dinner, Heidi asks Alafel if she can stay. Grandpa, I don't want to go somewhere else and stay with others. But Alafel looks at her without sparing an extra word. The following day, hearing the tingling sound from a distance, Heidi is attracted to the sound and gets up. It's the Gothard boy, whose name is Peter. He comes over to pick up Alafel's goats. Alafel seeks the chance to ask Peter to take Heidi to the mountain for the day, and even asks him to teach her what's usually done in the mountain along with the cheese and sausage packed by Alavlo. Heidi is happy to join Peter and spends the day running and chasing after the goats. While Heidi is having fun, Peter sneakily eats half of her food and puts the blames on the goats. Suddenly, two goats start fighting and Peter picks up the stick and hits the goats to stop them. Heidi runs after Peter, stops him from beating the goats and promises to give him half her food every day if he can stop it. Peter gladly accepts Heidi's proposal for the food. But he tells Heidi to keep it a secret from El, because people in town rumor that El killed someone in the past. Back home, Heidi acts strangely and says she will sleep in the barn again. El believes that Heidi has heard the rumors about him. He asks Heidi who she trusts more. Heidi chooses to believe what she has seen and hugs El before going to bed. As time flows away at its own pace, El is getting used to having Heidi around for the three days she stays. He is doing some carpentry to surprise Heidi, and Heidi enjoys her days with Peter. They are in the mountain, chasing after goats and having fun with each other. When Heidi returns, she surprisingly finds a second chair in the house and knows that Grandpa makes it for her and allows her to stay with him for good. Days pass, Heidi enjoys having fun with Peter every day. But this day, Peter brings the bad news, saying that it will be the last day to come over because it is time for him to attend school, but they can see each other again in the spring. Walking in the street, people look at them weirdly and gossip. The priest even tries to persuade Alavel to agree for Heidi to go to school, especially at her age. Alavel turns it down and says that Heidi won't come down the mountain to attend any education. Winter comes in the blink of an eye, and each day, Heidi stays alone in the house with Alavel. Her eyes lose shimmer, looking at how Heidi is being unhappy. Alavel tries every way to make her feel better. But nothing really works. Heidi only wishes spring arrives as early as possible to see Peter again. Seeing how unhappy Heidi is, Alavel decides to make a sleigh and send her down to Peter's house for a visit. Heidi is into much excitement that she can see Peter again. In the house, she meets Peter's mother and grandmother. Peter's father was dead, and the grandmother was blind and can barely eat food with her losing teeth. 
Peter isn't doing great at school. At that table, he complains about why his mother insists on sending him to school. Years pass. Heidi and Anna fully a happy and peaceful life together. One day, a woman shows up in front of their house. Unexpectedly, it's Tata. She comes here to take Heidi away. She claims to have found an excellent place for Heidi. A place where she can't go to school and make friends. After hearing the news, Alawal tells Dada again to leave and questions her intentions of why caring about Heidi all of a sudden, knowing that she won't win the argument with Alawal. Dada pretends to leave again. On halfway of the mountain, Dada comes across Heidi. She was among the goats. Again like in the old days, Dada tells Heidi the excellent news that she can't significantly change her life. However, Heidi says she only wants to stay with her grandpa. Again, Dada lies to her and says Alavla also wishes her to leave here because he thinks it's the best. Dada doesn't give Heidi time to say goodbye to everyone but hurriedly holds her hands and heads to the train station. Not too far away, Peter has seen everything. Peter returns with the goats, but Alopo doesn't see Heidi with him. He quickly realizes what is happening and runs down the mountains. It is too late! Heidi is gone with Dada. Everyone is making fun of Alavla, for he can never care for a child well. Getting off the carriage! Heidi is brought to Seisman Mansion, where she meets the butler downstairs. Being a bit scared and anxious, Heidi comes to the second floor, where she meets Clara and the home teacher Rodimer. Rodimer is quite unhappy when she sees the messy Heidi standing before her. Heidi's clothes are worn out, creating a vast difference from the elegant girl Clara's wheelchair bounded in front of her. On the other hand, Dada asks for a paycheck from Rodimer because she has successfully trafficked Heidi to this wealthy family. Unfortunately, Heidi has seen everything again with how Aunt Dutta does to her. Two girls hit it off right away. Clara is curious about what Heidi is wearing, and Heidi decides to take Clara cruising around the room. Clara even protects Heidi and lies for her when Heidi accidentally pushes the wheelchair to the table. Heidi has too many difficulties following the manners in the house. Everything is too new and challenging for her. She learns table manners, how to talk to the servants right and speak to others elegantly. The following day, she gets up and several maids immediately bring her to the shower room. They bathe her carefully, do their best to rid all the dirt off Heidi's body and then put a new dress on her, which fits greatly with her identity. Heidi also joins Clara in lecturing class, but she doesn't even know one single letter. As days go by, Heidi and Clara form a great friendship. Heidi often wheels Clara around the mansion. Clara becomes ill and has to stay only in the wheelchair after her mother dies, and her father is drowned in business and doesn't always come home. Clara is trapped in the house and can't go anywhere. This day, the two girls sneak out of the mansion without permission. They are so happy to wander around the market. Heidi climbs to the top of one building, hoping to find and see where her house is from far away. The butler finds them in the street and brings them back home. Clara gets Heidi's back, but Rodinmar punishes her without permitting her to have dinner. Heidi has had enough of all the unpleasant rules in the house. She packs her back and hugs Clara, heading directly out of the mansion. But Rodemeyer stops her immediately and says Heidi is not allowed to leave at her will. Heidi's situation gets worse. She starts to have nightmares at night because she misses everything on the mountain. Heidi even starts sleepwalking and scares the maids at night, for they think they have encountered a ghost in the house. Clara's father finally comes back to the mansion after one business trip. He never sees Clara being this happy and believes it's the greatest decision to buy Heidi into the house. Day by day, every night, Heidi sleepwalks. She goes to the front door and looks at the sky, hoping to find her grandpa and everything in the mountain. The family doctor suggests to Clara's father that Heidi should be sent back to her grandpa because she has poorly become ill. After a thorough decision, Clara's father decides to send her back right away, for he can't stand what this poor girl is suffering. Clara goes back to her room and wipes tears alone. She also can't stand the fact that Heidi will be sent away because Heidi has become the only hope and happy source in her life. Heidi hands the gift that her grandpa made for her to the butler and asks him to give it to Clara, saying she should visit someday. She is finally on her way back home. Back on the mountain, everyone is surprised to see Heidi. She is looking entirely different from before. Peter happens to be in the street. When he sees Heidi, he immediately takes Heidi to his house. Heidi takes all the soft bread out of her bag that she secretly took from the mansion to Peter's grandma. She still remembers that Peter's grandma has lost most of her teeth and can't chew hard food. Heidi takes off her fashionable clothes, again with only her underdress left. Finally, she can run freely like in the old days. Elifel is in shock when he sees Heidi. The two run to each other and hug. Heidi puts back on her old clothes. Every day she enjoys spending time with her grandpa. Like in the old days, she and Peter hang out and run after the goats. She's finally getting back to her mountain life.
When winter comes, Alopal also lets go of his stubbornness and sends Heidi to school. On this normal day, suddenly, a group of people arrives in the mountain. It's not someone else but Clara. The two girls happily hug each other immediately. Clara's health is worsening because the days without Heidi are painful. So her family decides to bring her to visit Heidi. The two girls spend their days together. Doing everything, nobody knows that Peter is so jealous about Clara's coming. This day, he purposely pushes Clara's wheelchair down the mountain and pretends it's not his doing. Alo carries Clara on his back and rushes out the door to look for a wheelchair. But nobody can find it without a wheelchair. Clara is sitting on the rock and enjoying the beautiful views and breeze in the mountain. When heading home, Heidi and Peter help her stand up and encourage her to walk on her own back. Clara's father suddenly appears among them and blames his mother for taking Clara to such a ridiculous place. But when he turns around, he sees Clara. This girl is not with her wheelchair but stands up straight with her feet. Everyone can't believe it and the father bursts into tears all of a sudden. It's time for Clara to leave. At the end of the movie, Clara's grandma gives an empty notebook to Heidi as a gift. She encourages her to dream bravely and write her own life story. For she has been a little girl who ever dares to break the rules and move freely towards her life pace.